said on this Aaron Elser, I think his tweets, when he gets a particularly off subject and gets personal and punches down, I think they're bad news. They get well, him off his agenda. Well, he's ill-suited, Neil, so, so, if you think that. Uh, I, I, he no, constantly no, no, but that doesn't mean, the tweets. Not, not, but, Congresswoman, that doesn't mean that I say, all right, you're out as president. Let the American people decide that the in the next election. The American people have decided his polling numbers are down under 40 percent. He's 36 percent or 35 percent. I can remember I when Ronald Reagan spoken. polled in the 30s, Congresswoman. I can but remember. But Ronald Reagan was, it was a commander-in-chief, and he was attempting My to run the government. My point is, if you go by polling you agree numbers or, or snapshots at times, of course, we no, would have never seen about, Ronald Reagan no, I'm going. A lot of you criticized the interview. Many of you saying you guys are talking over each other. Yeah, but it saves a lot of time, didn't it? All right, uh, back to an issue that the good congressman was raising, maybe implementing something called the 25th Amendment. Now, Greg Jarrett, my friend here, also a Cracker Jack lawyer, knows a lot more about it than I do. But essentially, Greg, it is deeming the president mentally or physically incapable of doing his duty, right? But how does it work? She said the basis is incompetence and being ill-suited for the job. Well, clearly Sheila Jackson Lee hasn't read the Constitution of the 25th Amendment. I'd be happy to loan her my little pocket dog-eared copy of it. It talks about the line of succession if the president becomes unable to discharge the duties and the powers of his office. But now, who determines is, that? Well. He can determine it, or the vice president together with the cabinet, and then two thirds of both houses of Congress. Oh, you need the House and Senate oh, yeah. to go along with it. Yeah, you do. Okay. So look, um, the 25th Amendment talks about functional incapacity. If you have a stroke, or uh, if you're anesthetized, as a couple of presidents invoked it uh, when they went into surgery, um, unable to feed yourself, that sort of thing. Functional incapacity, that's different than being ill-suited or incompetent, which is really sort of a political judgment. I don't like your policies. I don't like the way you're handling your or job. Or they think you're crazy with your tweets, yeah, which is what she was like, saying. Yeah. But, but now, the president and the cabinet have to go along, and that's your first line of defense. Now, how many... Uh, obviously, this was born in, I think, 1967, Correct. some years after the assassination Ratified of in President Kennedy. Um, but it was also to address the kind of physical maladies that bedeviled after stroke Woodrow Wilson, when legend has it his wife all but ran the country, That's right. or Franklin Roosevelt as his And there was polio no mechanism progress. in place for that. Now there is, but it's never been used or even attempted, right? Right. That is correct. You would have to get the vice president to say he is functionally incapacitated, can't discharge his duties. You'd have to get a majority of the cabinet to sit down and say the same. Then they refer it to the leaders of both the House and the Senate. And then both houses, by two-thirds majority, wow. would have to vote for it. So, so it couldn't just leave with the no. cabinet and the White House and the vice president, Look, right? Look, you were correct when you were interviewing Sheila Jackson Lee. You had this sort of both bemused and confused look on your face because she was misstating the law. She should get a refund for a law degree at UVA. She doesn't know anything about the 25th Amendment. It has no application whatsoever to a person who may be, in her words, ill-suited for the job. But ill-suited in her estimation meant, Greg, he seems mentally unhinged, that he is not up to because of the crazy stuff he does. So let me ask you a, a polite question on that regard. How do they determine if, a, if an elected official is mentally compromised, if he's doing crazy stuff or increasingly crazy stuff? How do you address that or do you say well, that's a strict thing to define yeah well there's no standard for it because it's never been invoked it's never happened before you've only had a couple of presidents who have gone into surgery right. invoked the third provision of the 25th amendment in which they can invoke it themselves president Bersini did that when he had some surgery done right yes right um, so uh, in terms of functional incapacity mental disability it's never happened. My guess is you would probably, you know, want to get medical opinions as to whether... But then the president would have to be open to a medical yeah, evaluation. Or, like we do know under forms. increasing duress presidents, and this would be understandable, how far it goes is anyone's guess that, you know, Richard Nixon and Henry Kissinger were famously kneeling at paintings in the right. White House and praying. And I'm just wondering, would that have been the, the litmus test for someone to say, all right, that... Forget about the Watergate thing, forget about the cover-up, now he's, he's praying to paintings. Suffering paranoia, psychosis, as Nixon famously did, he became right. unhinged. 
Uh, was he unable to discharge his duties? Well, it turns out he wasn't unable to discharge his duties. And but never... They would have to get the president to agree to a no, psychological they... evaluation if they yes. wanted to, right? Yeah, you, I mean, you can't force somebody to have a psychological evaluation. But, um, what if you're really well, worried? You're by thinking... observation, I suppose, you could get medical opinions. But, you know, that's going up a road that's not even close to being approached here. Yeah. You've got a president who sends out a lot of tweets. And, you know, Sheila Jackson Lee and others forget that. You know, his tweet, tweet about Mika Brzezinski was only after she called him right. a thug, a dope, mentally unhinged. Fully agree, but I just don't think the president should get in that kind of tit for tat. Yeah, but, but I know you and I just Although really... I must say, I was talking to a friend yeah. who was out there at uh, his golf club this weekend, and person after person came up. You keep going after the media with those tweets. His supporters like his that supporters he's like doing it. that because they view the media as being inherently unfair and against the and president. And you said in Sheila Jackson Lee's list, she's hardly the, the one to be criticizing anyone, right? She, she's voted one of the worst bosses on Capitol Hill. Uh, Washingtonian Magazine listed her as the meanest member of Congress. She has the highest turnover rate. She uh, called her members of the staff uh, foolish, stupid morons. You should see what I call mine. You know, so she's, yeah. she, I, well, we've heard it in the hallway. I'm Sorry, just, but you know, I, four I, doors down from sometimes you. Sometimes they need that. You but know. she's such a hypocrite, you know. She, <laughs> She gives more than Trump does. So you don't think this is going anywhere? No. Because I keep hearing people mention it and just say, you know? You know, they, they were aggrieved that he won the election. Right. They tried to contest that with the Electoral College. It didn't work.